Yeah. The number I to contact this program was 08459. <coughs> oh. mm. <coughs> Do you hear that? I heard that. Do you know what happened to me last night? What? Do you know, I want to talk to God. I'll tell you why. If you can, can you get me somebody that's near God? Do you know, there's two things wrong with the human body, right? And the one thing, when you talk about evolution, everything was sorted out. People sorted out your eyes, right? And all the hands are sorted out. There's no part of your body that you can't touch. Do you realize that, yes. don't you? Yes. I mean, that took a lot of planning. Yeah. And every finger does its job. And your feet are great because you can walk nearly anywhere. Everything is sorted out. And your ears are great because they're in just the right place to hear stuff. And do you know what's good about your nose? It's just right above your mouth. Because if you eat something that's not great, then your nose will smell it because it's very close to it. And you'll say, she's a boy, don't like the smell of that. Mm -hmm. I won't eat that. And then you put it down, which prevents you from eating stuff that's going to be bad for you. But there's two things that yeah. never happened. We have to go to the toilet. Well, What's the point of that? Why didn't somebody sort that out? See, whenever we eat stuff, right? All the goodness is taken out of it, and all the other Wait, stuff. We is... know, we know, I know. But I mean, why, why, why do you, can we just not use everything? Did you see the fattest man in the world, or whatever it was last night? He's very fat, isn't he? Oh, God bless him! I couldn't watch it. I know. God he, bless he, him. He looks like a. No, I ran out of our living room, roaring out of it. No, but you have to learn to look at these no, things. No, I couldn't. God bless him. And I didn't see it. I just saw a photograph of him in the no. paper. He, he took over the whole page. Oh. What's the other thing that they haven't got right? God, Mister, he missed a beat here. What's the other thing? And that's why I coughed there. What's that other thing? Well, I don't like I don't like coughing and I don't like sneezing. I really hate sneezing. Oh, sneezing is great because no. do you know what sneezing is? Uh, God organized. God says, "Just them boys down there on Earth there. See them boys that's evolved from them mud skippers. See them boys there that came out of the trees with them monkeys. What we'll do with them is sometimes there be a lot of mucus. This is God speaking now. Some sometimes there be a lot of mucus and 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 their and their throat there. You see." And that would clog up, you see. So especially when they got a bit of a cow there, you know, or that swine flu. And that would clog up, you see, and maybe stop them breathing. And Christ, they might die, you know. So what we'll do is we'll invent a thing that'll clear all that out in just the one road. Because it'll have to be something forceful. Because you can't just go... <coughs> you can't do that. What we'll do, we'll, we'll invent a thing, we'll call it a wheeze. No, no, there's an other thing called a wheeze. It's like a jeep. No, what we'll, do, we'll call it a sneeze. That's what we'll call it. So what we'll do is we'll clear out the pipes at high volume, at high velocity, and go, Bleak! and then you'd be able to close your eyes at the same time. Now, what's the other thing? Up to that, 600 miles an hour. Exactly. What's the thing that God messed up on? You. Apart from the fact that we have to go to the toilet, which is a great inconvenience, especially people who own pubs. They have to build toilets and everything. And you have to, you know, it's terrible. There's no point in it. Why didn't God just say, we let them just walk around? Don't it's have a to pity to you have to go to the toilet, otherwise you'd make a lovely ornament. What's the thing that he got really wrong? I don't know. The windpipe is too close to your thrapper. Where well, your food goes down. Your windpipe's just beside it. So every once in a while, a wee bit of food goes down the windpipe. I was nearly chokes you. And, then people, <laughs> and people have to thump you in the back and everything. So why didn't he put it around a wee bit to the left? that the, the grub wouldn't get down your windpipe. And that's what happened to me yesterday. There's a lot of people who would like to grab, grab me by the windpipe. Pipe, yes. And grab me by the thrapple. Yes, yes. No, that's what happened to me yesterday. A little piece of something lodged in my windpipe, and I still haven't got it free yet. And you, you heard me struggling there. You heard me almost choking. So that's a, a, a legacy from yesterday. And I blame God for that. But you can't do that. I can't blame blaming him. I, there's two things I'm doing today that I don't have to do. You'll have no luck. I have no luck You'll anyway. You'll have a flat tyre when you go out of this building but at least, today. Well, I can't... Uh, I'm right. telling you, you'll Will have I? a flat tyre, yes. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll listen to the nozzle. <laughs> anyway, a lady says, doesn't your body do some strange things when you least expect it? Well, that's what I was trying to explain before the news. The news stopped me. Or is it just me? Many's the time I've been sitting talking to someone and let out a laugh. Very loud. Pardon? Oh, Emma and I have... Realised it got very loud. Oh, has it got loud? Yeah. It was great a moment ago. Did somebody do something? We got my leg again? Yeah. A laugh is supposed to come out through the mouth, but sometimes I've forgotten to open my mouth whilst I laugh. Some people may say, that makes a change. I wish you'd do that more often. And I have accidentally snorted, and then a big runny snotter appears. 
and then I have to cover my nose, apologise, and then grope about for a hanky, which isn't about my person, and then I have to run to the toilet for some toilet roll. It's very embarrassing. Is it just me? I think it is just her. Yeah, do you ever do that? Do you ever go... <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, you yes, know, and then yes, yes. snutters come out. And here's another one. I don't know if I should uh, mention this or not, but you know, this is what the people are saying. Never mind windpipes and thrapples, kid. I find that the female reproduction setup to be very inaccessible. It's like lying on your back trying to fix something under the sink. It takes all the fun out of it. No wonder so many men are on the DLA with bad backs. Is there someone on the phone here? Yes. Oh, good morning. Well, would you like to say hello? Hello, Jerry. <laughs> Dennis here. Good morning, Dennis. How are you? Right. Uh, you, I must say your program provided me with some humour this morning. Well, thank you. Talked, you. you talked about Margaret Keyes appearing in the near future on your program. Next Friday, not tomorrow, but next Friday. Right. I'm looking forward to that. It's the first right. time it's the first time we've ever had anyone on with a with I suppose an operatic voice, but she's kind of a crossover. Right, but right. But she's got a wonderful well, voice. If you don't mind me saying so, the, the uh, female singers are either sopranos, mezzo sopranos, altos or contraltos. That's right. But you described her as a tenor. So I look forward to that. Oh, I, did I say that? I'm yes. S- I, I don't know. <laughs> did I say that really? <laughs> yes. I look forward to a female tenor. I've never heard a female I'm tenor sorry. before. Did I really say that? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. Slip of the tongue. Mm. Uh, she's, of course, a soprano. Uh, or maybe right. she's a contralto. Is she? I don't know. I'm not mezzo soprano. I'm not quite sure. I would say she's probably a soprano. I don't know what she is. What would she be? I, I know that uh, a tenor is a... A male voice. A uh, five or yeah. twice. <laughs> <laughs> tenor is a high male voice, like John yeah. McCormick, that kind of thing. Yeah. Baritone. And then I used to... I, I, was a, I was an alto when I was in the choir. I was in St. Eugene's Cathedral Choir. And I was an alto, contralto, but they called us altos, which meant that my voice was a little lower than the other boys, the other boys who went on to become Irish dancers. Sean, were you in the uh, no. choir at all? Were you not? No. Did you ever... I failed the, the audition. I did an audition in the doorway. No, I failed it. Did you? I failed it because I was nervous. How do you know you did just it? didn't fail it because you were no good? No, because it was... Um, I've never heard you singing. No, yes, you did. Oh, I heard you singing "Little Old Wine Drinker Me," but that's not the same thing because you were full. <laughs> and uh, there'd be no—you wouldn't be required to sing "Little Old Wine Drinker Me" during Bach's B minor Mass. No, we were asked to do "Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti Do." Well, I can see why you failed because you that was all the same note. Right, you see, but I couldn't do it. Do Re Mi Fa Sol uh, La Ti Do. Uh, I, yeah, I couldn't do it. If you'd have done that, you'd been yeah. in like a yeah. in like Flynn. Yeah, and uh, you must have felt rejected. I did. Did you? Yeah. Go home with your tail between your legs. Yeah. And did you tell your parents that you'd been? Yeah, because my they father, were expecting you. Do you no, my father was a, a, a fine singer, and he sang. Uh-huh. He sang in Monty the, was your father. Yes, and he and sang. Was he, was he a singer really? He's, there's a there's a in in the the local fish. There's a cup named after him, and he 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 won a cup. The Monty Coil Cup. James Coyle. Coyle. James Coyle. Monty was his nickname. Yes, yes. And, uh, well, and he was a good singer, wasn't yes, he? And well, I, see, that normally he passes that on. But it was nerves on. with me, you see. I was nervous. But you still can't sing. I've seen you when you're completely relaxed, uh, that is, drunk. And I've heard you singing. And there's no great talent there, I have to say. Or maybe you're always nervous. No, I'm sorry. Well, maybe you'd like to maybe sing a little something for us now. <laughs> no, now that you're sober and relaxed. Go on. Go on, sing no. a song. Go on, sing no. a song. Go on. I will Go on. Not. Let the people know what they missed. No, in the I'm choir. all right. Which choir did you audition for? The same one as I was yes. in? Uh, excuse me. Choir? Excuse me. Uh, I was uh, a few weeks ago. I was singing with Big Charlie. Charlie Lansborough. Yeah. Charlie will do anything. What were you saying? Do you sing a duet with him? Yeah. On stage? Yes. You're not serious. No, you know nothing about well, it. I know nothing not, about I'm it. I'm not talking about no, it. No, tell me about no, it. No, I'm not. No, this and is we something. we rehearsed in the afternoon and I, I sang a song. Hold and on a minute. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie appeared in, here in the city in the Millennium Forum. I'm not telling by the you. Way, by the way, speaking of which, uh, do you come here often is in, on the Millennium Forum tonight? And it's sold out. I come here every day. No, but do you come here often? The show, the showband thing is oh, on tonight. Yes, me. And it's, it's sold out. Yeah. This, this is what we're up against. This is what we must fight. This is what this programme is all about, to stop that kind of thing. Now, tell me this. Go on. Who? Go on, sing. What, a, what about your caller? Sing for Jerry. Go on, please. Is he away? He's no, not away. No, no, no he's Are not. you still there, sir? Yes, I am. I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to make him sing. Well, anyway, oh. I, just to say that uh, I enjoyed your announcement, anyway, that she was a tenor. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great, great singer. Right. She's a great, right. great singer, and uh, uh, I, I can't wait, to, because uh, we've never had anyone of that, I hesitate to say quality. 
but we've had people of quality, but we've never had anyone with that kind of, well, I suppose operatic voice is the, is the word I'm looking for. So it'd be nice to, uh, I, you know, I, I love that kind of thing, even though I don't like opera. But do you know when you're confronted with a really special voice? See, most people can't sing, God bless them. But most people get by, and most people who are songwriters can't sing. And most people who come in and sing don't have all that great voices, really. But whenever you come across a voice that's really special, I mean, it really hits you between the eyes, doesn't it? it so really, you're really saying does. some of the guests that you have had, can't, not, they weren't great singers? Not, not in, not in the, the operatic said, sense. Most, most people that come in aren't good don't, singers. No, what I'm that's saying what is... you said. No, 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 but stop that, twisting no, my words. That's, no, that's exactly... No, you saw an opening there, didn't you? That's what you said. Well, okay, let I'm me rephrase that. defend the people let who... Me let me rephrase that. Most people who come in to sing don't have that kind of operatic voice, that kind oh, of yeah. voice that mm. is only given to one in a thousand or two thousand or yeah. ten thousand, whatever it is. Most people can hold a tune. I'm not, I mean, for instance, I was at, I was at church last night, mm -hmm. and I won't tell you why. And I heard a man behind me singing. Do you know the way you sing at the end? Mm -hmm. You know when the priest says that's we're re we're read up. Mm -hmm. He says, "Go, and the mass is over," mm -hmm. and then they sing, and the priest walks down the aisle singing. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see them doing that? Yeah. You walk down the aisle going, boo, da, do, da, ba, da, do, da, yeah. ba, boo, da, da. It's great. It's funny when the priest walks past you singing. You think he's had a drink. Anyway, there's a man behind me, <laughs> there's a man behind me singing. And the most glorious voice. And I, my, I, I was dying to look around to see who he was. You know the way you just stand there and look at people singing? And people are going, mm. but this man was going, oh, but not like that, but beautiful, beautiful operatic voice. And I went, this man standing behind me, and I was picturing what he looked like. I said, this man, what does he look like? Had you ever hear somebody singing behind you and trying to figure out what you look like? And then finally, because you can't look around because he you knows you're looking around because he's singing. And he had the most beautiful voice, and I enjoyed it. And then the thing went over, and then we all shuffled out. And I looked around, and I had a look at him. He's a wee tiny man, wee baldy man. Well, what's wrong with that? But are, we, are we baldy men not allowed to be good singers? I'll stop defending wee baldy men. I will defend wee baldy men. It didn't sound like a wee baldy oh, man. That's all I'm saying. Oh, okay. Wee baldy men. I think I know how wee baldy men sound. And he didn't sound. He sounded like a big man with a big wave. People wave. who don't know you, who never have set eyes on you, and you would say to them, they would say, what does he look like? And you would say to them, what do you think Jerry Anderson looks like? <laughs> they all think you're a big, tall man. With, well, so I am. You know, I was told, one person described you as a, a tall man with red hair. I you know, I don't want to be a tall no, man. No, no, that's hair. what someone said to me. He's a big, tall fellow with red hair. I don't have red no, hair. He's not. Oh, no. People so slap. Anyway, anyway, the man, he didn't sound, he sounded like a big, tall man with a big, massive, wavy, wavy hair. What about Dennis? Uh, yes. Dennis, sorry about that. Yes, well, I, I was going to say, as you mentioned earlier, Jerry, um, ordinary singers who make ordinary records and so on, yes, they have the microphone near them and they yeah. can sing in tune and sometimes do vibrato. Mm -hmm. But one great thing about the operatic voice is it's so strong and it can project the voice. Yes. to the other end of the audience, to the other end of the hall. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're really great, and I look forward to it. Yeah, well, see, that was, that's what was required in days gone yeah. by, yeah. Uh, when people didn't have any amplification or microphones. You used to be able to, one of the things was, you had to be able to hit the back wall, and you had to be able to hear you open the cheap seats. Anyway, I, I look forward to that too, and thank you. I, I'm not an opera fan, to be honest with you, or ballet. I, I, I've tried ballet, I've tried opera, I, I've tried opera in Venice, I was at the opera in Venice, and I, I went in, I looked around me, and it was a beautiful, beautiful theatre, and I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it'll come to me in a moment. But I looked around, and I went, oh, my God, look at this. And then the band started. Oh, sure, the, band. the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> the orchestra started, and I went, oh, this is wonderful. See, once they started to sing, I switched off. Yeah. Because once you get used to their voices, it was, like, <laughs> it was too much for me. Anyway, uh, we look forward to that um, next um, Friday. And what did you not like about ballet? Um, I just get bored with it. Yeah. Uh, just you know, it's you yeah. know, it just didn't mean anything I'm to me. I, I know. I, I don't. Bodies. I don't want to knock it. No, no. But it just yeah. didn't mean anything to no. me. And I get fed up. I mean, I, I, I mean, I can't go to a musical even. I mean, especially you know, when people go to London, they go to musicals. I went to see the the, the Glums. What do you call it? Les Misérables. Mm. It was like having a gun to my head. I mean, I was. I had to be practically forced back after the interval. I went to see Miss Saigon. I was never as miserable in my life. I went to see a musical which I liked called Carousel, but was by an English company. It was awful. And I saw some other thing as well. It was awful. But the only thing I ever saw in a musical that I liked was the, um, what do you call that one, uh, Mel Brooks? The producers. The producers. It was great. Conleth, Conleth Hill was in that. 
from uh, Northern Ireland, from Ballycastle. And he was brilliant. That's the only musical I ever saw, and that was an American one. Well, what's, you know, what's Dennis's favourite? Mm. Dennis, what's your favourite? Do, do you like musicals? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I don't, I can't stand them. But I mean, is there any, any one, one particular one that you like? Um, probably, dare I say it, The Sound of Music. <laughs> oh, well, I've never seen that. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw it on, on on film, of course, but I never saw it on yeah. stage. It all depends who does these things. Yeah. I mean, you see, English people are terribly bad at those, uh, but I think Americans do musicals much better for some strange reason. I mean, the one that I saw were, were mostly Americans, but Connelith Hill was in, in, in an American star playing the Zero Mostel role. Anyway, that's now, neither here nor there. Uh, God bless you, my son. Can I say something quickly before I go? Go ahead, go ahead. Right, whenever I was, when I was in holiday in Rome during the summertime, most Italians leave Rome because it gets too hot in the summer. They do. Well, uh, I was in a restaurant, a, one of the famous restaurants, and uh, the operatic singers to, uh, in the summertime uh, don't sing in opera houses in Rome, but uh, so they go to the restaurants and sing there. That's and right. So we had the enjoyment of an operatic singer during our uh, stay at the restaurant. Oh yeah, that's great. That uh, they do yes. that in Venice too sometimes, and Just they also do it in Naples. Yeah. In. Yes. Oh, it's brilliant. Okay, well, yeah. good man. All Thank best. you very much. Bye. Bye. Rome's a very strange place during the summer. Things happen there. Why I, do they not sing the theatres in the summer? Because too hot. Too warm. Is it? Too hot. Yeah. They just get out of the tradition. Everybody uh, uh, vacates Rome in the summer. Yeah. The only people in Rome in July and August are people like us. Uh, we have a wee problem, says uh, Kevin. Uh, our pet Angora rabbit named. Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning we feed him around 10 o'clock outside our back door with a few lettuce and things. However, recently my wife has noticed that once we close the back door, our next door's cat comes over the wall and proceeds to... What? Do you leave a mm -hmm. calling card? No. What? No. What, uh, what am I it, like? it, it approaches Spartacus. Like, what am I like? Spartacus is a rabbit. Yes. And the cat comes over mm -hmm. the garden wall. How is your father? Is your mother still working? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. cross-fertilization of species. Something we don't talk about in Radio Ulster. Uh, anyway, he proceeds to mm -mm, mm. Spartacus for about four minutes whilst Spartacus is eating. Now, even we didn't do that. <laughs> even, out, even just after we were married. After this, he goes home. The rabbit does not seem to mind or notice. I think we know what, the, we know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Is the wee sailor gone? It's been very, very bad this morning. I'm sorry. Very, very I do, I'm bad. sorry. I apologise. It's the way I am. I'm sorry. Every time I turn around.